Halloween was the perfect release date for Luigi's Mansion 3. I know it's common for people, myself included, to return to some favorite seasonally appropriate movies over and over again every single year, but I don't know that people actually do that with games. But if you were going to do that with a game, Luigi's Mansion 3 would be the one to choose. It's basically a cross between the Tower of Terror and the Haunted Mansion at Disney World with a healthy dose of Ghostbusters thrown in. Luigi, Mario, Peach, and the Toads go on a vacation where they've chosen to stay at a high-rise hotel in the middle of nowhere, apparently. But that night, Luigi wakes up to find that it's all been a ruse. King Boo has been set free along with a bunch of ghosts that Luigi had previously captured and given to Professor E. Gadd, and now they've taken up residence in a hotel run by ghosts. Overnight, they captured Mario, Peach, and the Toads in paintings, and it's up to Luigi to strap on his trusty Poltergust and recapture all the ghosts while setting his friends free. But this time, the setting of a hotel complicates things for Luigi because ghosts have stolen the buttons for each of the floors in the elevator. So you'll have to explore floor, beat a boss, get the button for the next floor, and continue your way up the tower. Each floor has its own set of collectible items to find, and doing so will require use of every trick and gadget you've picked up along the way. So much so, that at least for the early floors, until you've acquired all the abilities, you may have to revisit places you've already explored in order to find everything. But even after you've completed a floor, it's worth going back to track down a boo that only shows up after you've completed the boss fight. And those boss fights are great, they can even be fairly challenging, at least until you figure out the pattern necessary to beat them. The game does a good job of keeping you guessing and making you make use of each of Luigi's abilities. Those abilities include using the vacuum to pull things towards you and push things away from you, firing a plunger that you can then use the vacuum to pull things down or break things you otherwise couldn't, if you use both ZL and ZR at the same time you get a little jump jet action, you can charge up the flashlight to stun ghosts with a bright flash, and there's a black light that you can use to highlight tracks in order to find ghosts. You can use it to pull items out of paintings or to illuminate things hidden in the environment. But where things get really interesting is Professor Egad's newest trick, Guigi. Guigi is a flubber version of Luigi that Luigi poops out, casts his consciousness to, and because he's made of goo, he can enter areas real Luigi can't. But he also can't enter places Luigi can. Well, mainly just water. Where developer Next Level Games really stretches its puzzle crafting creativity is when the puzzles start requiring you to make use of both Luigi and Gooigi in moments of solo cooperative play. Speaking of co-op, there's co-op here where one player controls Luigi and the other plays as Gooigi. There's also an online cooperative multiplayer mode called Scarescraper, which I'll do a separate video on. There's also a more competitive mode called Scream Park that has a few Mario Party style minigames designed for local multiplayer. Luigi's Mansion 3's controls feel good for the most part. Death perception can become a bit of an issue from time to time, but it never becomes a game breaking issue, and you can use the controller's gyro to tilt Luigi's vacuum up and down. I didn't use that feature much, but it's there if you like that sort of thing. This is definitely one of the best looking Switch games yet. Granted, you're not looking at beautifully rendered wide open spaces, you're in smaller set pieces, but there's an attention to detail in the set pieces that shouldn't go unrecognized. Each room on each floor is so jam-packed full of items to suck up that I started obsessive compulsively acting as a one-man overnight cleaning crew, not willing to exit a room until I had cleared it of every single thing that could possibly be sucked up or broken apart. The animations are very smooth and well done. There are some games where you can definitely tell the difference between separate cutscene animations and the graphics and animations of the actual gameplay. This isn't one of them. The transitions from cutscene to in-game action is seamless. As for the set pieces, if I can push the Disney World analogy further, developer Next Level Games stretches their creativity muscle by expanding the concept of a hotel to an amusement park full of a variety of themed lands. There's a medieval castle, there's a grassy overgrown jungle, there's a Jurassic Night at the Museum floor, there's an Egyptian desert floor, and others I haven't even gotten to yet. What a weird, silly, sort of off-the-wall thing Luigi's Mansion games are. You look at the kind of adventures Mario goes on, and obviously he's the well-known and beloved brother, so you kinda can't help but think Luigi gets the short end of the stick. He's definitely underappreciated compared to his brother, but then the Luigi's Mansion games come out and you realize he gets to be a Ghostbuster, so that's pretty cool too. In some ways, the Luigi's Mansion games make me think of Tim Burton's animated movies. 
They have a mixture of creepy, not-so-creepy style and a quirky sense of humor that's so wonderfully weird that I often wonder how it can even exist. But against all odds, it does, and that's partly why I love it. It doesn't hurt that part of the obvious inspiration here seems to be some beloved Disney World attractions as well. If you've been playing Luigi's Mansion 3, let me know how your haunted hotel adventure is going in the comments. Give the video a like if you enjoyed it, and I'll catch you on the next one. Oh, yeah.